And then Ross Perot, he died at 89. Now, Ross Perot was a, uh, a ch you know, he had a checkered past, shall we say. Uh, he was not kind to gay people. Um, this was, uh, you know, in the, uh, when the AIDS epidemic was raging. And uh, my recollection, one person called and actually mentioned this, and I don't have the details on it, but my recollection is that, that uh, uh, he was sort of in the Reagan camp of, of uh, you know, this is the gay disease kind of thing, and, and not, not understanding or, or, or just being a bigot, you know, in that regard. But the thing that I thought was most consequential about Ross Perot's attempts in 1992 to challenge, and nearly successful attempts, to challenge both George Herbert Walker Bush and Bill Clinton had to do with trade. Um, in 92, the Reagan administration had been working out a trade deal for a couple of years, the last couple of years of the Reagan administration. They, they initiated this thing to work out a trade deal with Canada and Mexico that would allow American corporations to send manufacturing jobs to Mexico and the logic of this, the way that this was being sold to us by the Reagan administration and then by the Bush administration, was that by sending factories to Mexico, those are jobs that we really don't want here anymore anyway. They're dirty jobs. They're hard jobs. Let's, let's let the Mexicans do those jobs, right? So we'll send the, the factory jobs down there. The factory jobs pay pretty well. I mean, in the United States, they were paying, you know, 30, 40, 50 bucks an hour in today's dollar equivalents. Um, if they go to Mexico, maybe they'll pay five or ten dollars an hour. It turned out they only paid a dollar an hour, but in any case, um, that these good manufacturing jobs in Mexico will create a Mexican middle class. That Mexican middle class will want to buy American products made in America, which will help other American manufacturing. So yeah, we're going to move our car production down there and maybe our washing machines, but all kinds of cool stuff that we build here will want. You know, the Mexicans will want to buy. Didn't work out that way, but that was how uh, both. The, well, it, it was almost entirely Republican efforts, you know, in, uh, starting with Nixon opening China to Pepsi, Pepsi Cola and then, you know, Reagan uh, with NAFTA. And, but then the Democratic Party got on the bandwagon in 91 and with, you know, the, with the creation of the Democratic Leadership Council that, that adopted free trade and said, we really, you know, we've got, we're moving into the computer era. These are new white collar jobs. And, and I think a lot of people bought this and I think a lot of the people selling it were doing it with the best of intentions. They believed it to be true that, you know, we don't need manufacturing in this country anymore. We can just move to uh, basically a service economy or a manufacturing light where we're manufacturing bits and bytes. We're doing software rather than hardware. So anyhow, Ross Perot said, no, if you, if you move jobs down to Mexico without, uh, you know, wage protections, without environmental protections, without, you know, uh, oversight. And at that time, Pre was running the government down there, which is notoriously corrupt. He said, if you do this, uh, what's going to happen is this giant sucking sound from the South. It's going to destroy American jobs. And he debated both Bill Clinton and George H.W. Bush. You know, all both of them agreed, yeah, NAFTA is a great thing or will be a great thing if we pass it. Now, NAFTA, had, had they had finished the negotiations in the Bush administration. So this was George Herbert Walker Bush's NAFTA deal that then Bill Clinton signed and, you know, made into law. But, but my recollection was Ross Perot disliked that strongly and campaigned against it. In fact, that was what motivated him to get into politics and run for president in 92, and then again in 96 against Bill Clinton. And this morning on TV, on the TV machine, and I don't know what networks you listen to, if you had a different experience, let me know. But what I heard on TV was that Ross Perot was campaigning in 92 against government debt. Now, maybe this is because the producers and the talent are all young enough that they literally don't remember the 92 election, and I'm old enough that I do. Or maybe it's that the networks really kind of like those free trade agreements and they don't want to talk about the fact that they're very unpopular. Or maybe it's that they think that, you know, Trump now owns the anti-NAFTA vote and they don't want to help Trump. I don't know. But there's a lot of Democrats who are opposed to NAFTA and these trade deals, too. Uh, and a lot of them tragically voted for Donald Trump in the last election. I don't think they'll make that mistake again, but we'll see. And uh, so, so anyway, I, I, this is in the in the in in the with the goal of correcting the record, shall we say? The clip that I heard on MSNBC this morning started with uh, Perot basically saying. Um, uh, basically, it was, you know, his giant sucking sound for the South. But it, they completely omitted the part about 
moving your jobs to Mexico. So here's the entire clip. First thing you ought to do is get all these folks who've got these one-way trade agreements that we've negotiated over the years and say, fellas, we'll take the same deal we gave you. And they'll gridlock right at that point because, for example, we've got international competitors who simply could not unload their cars off the ships if they had to comply. You see, if it was a two-way street, just couldn't do it. We have got to stop sending jobs overseas. To those of you in the audience who are business people, pretty simple. If you're paying $12, $13, $14 an hour for factory workers, and you can move your factory south of the border, pay a dollar an hour for labor, hire a young 25, that's assume you've been in business for a long time, you've got a mature workforce. Pay a dollar an hour for your labor, have no health care, that's the most expensive single element, making a car, have no environmental controls, no pollution controls, and no retirement, and you don't care about anything but making money, there will be a giant sucking sound going south. Yeah. There you go. The giant sucking sound going south. That's that. Uh, I had. I, I even had that that quote wrong. But but it's like you know, are we reinventing history? Are we rewriting history? Seriously, uh, you know, Ross Perot was right on this, and and I my recollection is that he was right on this.